Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this presentation about uh, the topic Internet of Things, Cyber Physical Systems, Factory of the Future, Industry 4.0, but exactly it's, it's a German term, so I will call it Industry 4.0. Has anybody an idea about one of these terms? Perhaps the most general one is uh, cyber physical systems. What is a cyber physical system? Anybody heard about it? You don't have to answer. Just give me a sign. Who understands the term cyber physical systems? Nobody. Oh, okay, wonderful. So that makes it easy for me to tell you stories. But to be honest, perhaps half a year ago, also I didn't have any idea about these terms. Perhaps Internet of Things is one which in my field of science is quite important since several years. But terms like uh, cyber physical systems and industry 4.0 probably derive some from the politics. So, um, you know, the politics, finances, education, finances, also research. And they are looking for topics, what the future will be, what are the interesting things in future. And they have to create strategies where, in which direction the money should be spent. And within this content, terms like Industry 4.0, which comes from the German government, who created a strategy about education, about research in the next 10 years. And also cyber physical systems. So the politics and also some researchers think that in this area there could be the future. But to be honest, probably nobody knows if this will be. Uh, but for sure it's quite, uh, quite interesting questions. And so um, the content of this lesson will be to talk about uh, these terms and to give you an idea about future visions, how our world could be when we connect the internet, the existing internet, which was obviously a success. So perhaps 20 years ago, nobody thought that, or some visionaries thought that the internet will be as successful as it is. But today we know it is very successful. And perhaps the vision is that also the Internet of Things could be successful like the Internet. But we will discuss about these terms and I will show you the different meaning and the idea behind. So my name is Martin Ecker. I, as I already mentioned, I come from the technical logistics and in this field uh, the term Internet of Things since perhaps 10 years is quite interesting. So the idea in logistics is to make the things that we transport, that we convey, to make these things intelligent and to make to give them the possibility uh, to communicate. This, from this arises several advantages in technical logistics. Think about containers, about cargo. For sure you're interested, where is your container? And for sure you are interested in that the container knows about his history, knows about its content knows a lot of things. This makes logistics much more easier. So in this field, 
we use times uh, things like um, Internet of Things since several years uh, more or less intensive. So I want to start uh, with the content. I'll try to explain the terms Internet of Thing and M2M. What means M2M? Machine to machine. Wonderful. Machine to machine communication. Uh, we will discuss about the technical background about this kind of communication and which systems has have already been realized. Uh, we will discuss about the term industry 4.0 and we will discuss about factories of the future and all these terms are very <coughs> connected with each other. So what means Internet of Things? Me Internet of Things comes, I think, out from logistics. Um, so we are interested in having products that are intelligent and they are able to communicate. Uh, these are important requirements for the Internet of Things. And also we can continue this idea for products, not only for products we want to transport, we want to convey, also for products we want to produce. Also the raw material itself could be intelli intelligent and could have an idea about its future being, about its production process, about its history, everything. So this is the general idea behind Industry uh, 4.0. So all these terms are linked together and they are quite connected together. And things like machine to machine um, is an important requirement for Internet of Things, for Industry 4.0, for cyber physical systems, which is perhaps the general term for systems, a connection between computer and physical things. Okay, let us start with machine to machine. Machine to machine, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, picture of Ford. <coughs> What's the task here? We want to measure situation, I think, of the car in front. Behind is a car which collects the data, which analyzes the data. It's a kind of condition monitoring. So condition monitoring is also a term which is very uh, connected to uh, the terms Internet of Things. It's an application of Internet of Things. So this is an early version of this. More or less every requirement we can find here for the Internet of Things. We have probably some intelligent within the car. Perhaps there is a computer or at least a human being. We have a connection. We have the possibility to communicate. For the Internet of Things, the structure of the Internet is missing. But in these days, I think uh, the Internet was not that equipped. And a modern application of the more or less same situation, but applicable for everyday application is the idea of communication between two cars in everyday traffic. So the application of 1974 was a single application between two cars for, for measurements, but visions of a modern traffic is that each car can communicate with each other participant 
of the traffic and uh, to exchange data, what data could be interesting of the car in front of me. Velocity, for sure, the position, where are you? This is an important, uh, important question um, regarding tra traffic jams. So if there are a lot of uh, cars in a certain area, probably there will be a traffic jam. This information could be interesting for me. Now thanks, velocity for the distance, so probably I have to break. Velocity of my car, velocity of the car in front of me. What else? Where are you going? <laughs> Why? Perhaps for planning the... But normally the car does not know. Uh, perhaps you have to enter where you want to go. But also the condition of the street could be interesting. Does the car know about the condition of the street? Yes, because it is equipped. Actually, a car is equipped with a lot of sensors. We have GPS. We have all the sensors that measure acceleration, that measure the, the speed of uh, the single. Should I stay on a place? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I like to move. Here it's more casual, but here are the information, so <laughs> that's the problem. Okay. Um, but further on, not only two cars communicate with each other, all the communication is within the structure of a network, and which is the existing worldwide network, it's the Internet. Wonderful idea, wonderful vision. What are the problems? Privacy. Privacy, a very big problem. Data security and also the acceptance of the markets. So, from the point of technical view, more or less, it's not anymore a vision. It's possible to do. But uh, the main problems are privacy aspect, privacy, privacy issues, data security, and the acceptance of the market. And the consequences, if a car is hacked by a hacker, is much more heavier, it's much more uh, a problem than a normal PC, normal computer. So uh, M2M means general term regarding uh, the communication between two machines. Uh, if only the communication is point to point, like here, the, the structure and the architecture of the communication is quite easy. In this case, it was a, a wire, a cable connection, and they communicate in an analog or digital way. Quite easy. If it is within a network, it's much more complicated because you have to add several informations. And one of the most important uh, information, which is also a topic of this lesson, is the identification. In the case of the two cars, identification is not important because I know the signal comes from the car in front. But if there are a lot of cars, one important point is the identification. You have to know from who does the information come. Who is the car responsible to this information? So identification will be a very important point. In all these topics, machine-to-machine -machine communication, Internet of Things and things on. And when it's um, within the internet, another questions will be to, uh, we will have to solve um, according addressing, etc. Security of the data and so on. 
But the internet is uh, the infrastructure and the general architecture of machine-to-machine -machine communication is depicted in this picture. So usually we have not a point-to-point -point communication. Usually we have uh, the so-called DEP, data endpoint. We have several data endpoints, for example, several cars acting within our traffic. They send the data uh, about uh, by the use of a communication service. This could be mobile phones like GSM, GRS, or other systems like RFID. Who knows GSM? Wonderful. <laughs> SMS also, I think. It's also. Um, uh, a message service, uh, GPRS, mobile phone also, kind of, RFID, wonderful, okay, wireless LAN, I think also, so there are Ethernet, there are a lot of possibilities and there are a lot of existing different systems how this communication service can be done. In principle, it can be wireless or wired. Um, and all these data uh, come together at the DIP, the data <coughs> integration point, which is usually a server, a computer like this. This does not mean that the data endpoint, for example, our cars cannot communicate with each other, but the way is DEP, DIP, and back. So the communication usually is not direct. We have some integration point similar to the internet. So if you send a message, an email to your neighbor, usually the message is not direct to the computer of the neighbor, so it passes several points in the structure of this network. So this is the principle of uh, machine to machine communication as we use it for Internet of Things, probably also uh, <coughs> for application in industry industry 4.0. Machine to machine, I think, clear. Communication between uh, two machines um, under certain requirements and under certain defined condition. Um, also, the interface is a very important question. Uh, to realize an Internet of Things, that means that real objects are incorporated with the Internet, the communication, the interfaces, is a very important point because the application field, the objects are very different, but the structure of the internet is fixed. So um, the task is how can different objects with different tasks can communicate with each other and interact and cooperate with each other. So uh, the overall term about all these machines um, where computers cooperate with physical objects like motors, switches, actuators, uh, is called uh, cyber physical systems. So a cyber physical system is a system where a computer controls physical things. So up to now a lot of things are cyber physical systems. Uh, so the requirements is a computer, <coughs> control, and some kind of communication. But at least house uh, applications in the householding, more or less, according to this definition, could be a cyber physical system. Okay, let us start 
with the Internet of Thing. Uh, the term Internet of Thing has been established in by Kevin Ashton at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, well-known university uh, in the United States. And it describes the vision from the extension of the Internet, as we already talked about, the, intel, the Internet, a virtual world, and the connection between this virtual world of the Internet with the real world. And for sure, things like cyber physical systems will play an important role because they do the link between the computer and up to now the Internet is a computer computer communication and to to get to become the to get an interface to the real world we need something that interacts with our physical world and these systems are called cyber physical systems so the internet of things is the extension of the internet in our real world the problem is as already mentioned that these things and there are a lot of things not only things these can also be human beings that are or animals uh, that <coughs> are connected with uh, the internet and all these things I call them things uh, these objects have different functionality they have a different application field and for sure different technology examples are as already realized smartphones everything which is called smart indicates something like internet of things what else is smart smart tv okay i don't know perhaps yeah probably it's good application so <coughs> connected to the internet possible possibility to communicate by the internet intelligent due to a processor so what else smart smart home smart house smart smart key smart grids a lot of smart things so that means there are parts uh, internet of things so cars smart cars smartphones smart homes any kind of product smart animals for example animals which are connected to the internet could be interesting I know where the cow is I know about the condition of the cow I know about its feeling I know about its position perhaps interesting okay and we have the difference between internet and internet of things internet connection computer computer internet of thing is a network of very different things but the environment the communication environment is the internet this is the idea internet of things application as already mentioned cars that detect IC road and warn other vehicles about this situation goods that know their destination and organize their own way through logistic systems this is the idea of industry 4.0 the goods they know about their production products process they know about their destination and they are organized they organize their way through the production line itself this is the vision the idea of industry here punkt null um, cars that detect icy roads and warn other vehicles is a typical application of internet of things so very similar problems very similar question and at least um, 
Industrie 4.0 means to use the idea Internet of Things for nearly every product. Up to now, I think Internet of Things uh, will be applied for expensive things like cars, or like mobile phones. You need a lot of sensor, you need uh, the possibility to communicate. But the idea of Industry 4.0 is to expand this concept for nearly each product. Also for food, for example. A very good example, food. Uh, apple, yeah. So uh, why not an apple? So. Yes, but in this case, the refrigerator should be the intellig intelligent thing. So there are also other possibilities to, to recognize that there is an apple missing. But at the end of the idea, you're right, the apple has to communicate with the refrigerator. Now I'm gone. Buy a new one. But uh, perhaps the apple is not that good example, but a better one is a frozen chicken. So there are a lot of information about this frozen chicken which could be interested for the user and for the whole process line. For example, the history of the temperature. Because it's very important for a frozen chicken that the temperature never has been higher than minus, minus 80 degrees. And this is a typical application for Internet of Things to do a condition monitoring and to give this information to the user, to other products, or perhaps it also could warm the refrigerator. Attention, I'm warm. So this is the vision. But the, probably not that what uh, the politics actually is interested in. The... <coughs> The idea is concentrated on the production process. So the idea is to reduce the cost of, of the production. And the idea is that if the product itself is intelligent and organizes its production process itself, a lot of things could be possible. Even to produce only one piece at the price of a mass production. Because the problem of mass production, or the, 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 the problem of, of a single piece production, is that you have to do a lot of organization. And if the product does this organization itself, it will be quite cheap. So, uh, the main idea in this Internet of Things, where also machine to machine communication is uh, incorporated that there is a communication between things persons and the internet so a very heterogeneous system of communication between the internet things and users Problem, as already mentioned, is the data security and privacy issues and the acceptance of the market. So the requirement to realize Internet of Things is, as in the Internet, a requirement of the communication, type of communication, is that the participants, the objects, the things, are uniquely identifiable. So we need a number or some, some identification for each participant of the system, for each product, for each object, for each user, for each computer. So a lot of IDs 
we do need. So this is a core task to solve the problem of identification. And so you, you already know about the term RFID. You show me that you know about RFID. What means RFID? Identification, yes. Okay, so identification is a very important topic. Radio frequency identification. So, um, the things need to be identified. They have to be intelligent. They have to be able to communicate. And they have to be equipped with sensors to recognize measure their environment. This is the idea uh, of the Internet of Things. So at the beginning I mentioned it's a vision, it's a dream that perhaps in 10 years the world will be and that there are a lot of things will be incorporated within the Internet, the Internet of Things. Uh, state of the art is that we discuss since 10, 15 years about the Internet of Things and that the success of the Internet of Things is quite behind uh, the expected uh, potentials. So, talk about trillions of US dollars which can be earned by the application of Internet of Things. And I think you do agree that this is a very interesting vision. But, as already discussed, the problems privacy, data security, and acceptance of the market leads that the expectation, so that we are behind the expectations. So, other problems are the different standards. So, we need a unique kind of communication. We need one language, we need one protocol for this communication, and we have a variety of different machines and of different things. Acceptance of the user and data securities. But state of the art is that we have some applications, everything we call smart is more or less an application of Internet of Things, smartphone, tablets, smart meters in home application. What is a smart meter? What's the idea in home application? So smart meters means that you have a system, for example, that measures your power consumption in your house and according to your behavior, and according to the actual price of the power, uh, the consumption of the power will be regulated. For example, the, the dishes will be washed when energy is cheap during the night. Or you give the information of your consumption to the, provi to the provider, to your supplier of the electric power, of the gas power, uh, and again, we have some problems about privacy, data security. Perhaps you are not interested that your power supplier knows about your behavior. But you could save money, you could save energy. And you could uh, use the networks of power distribution in a very, uh, in a very efficient way way. That's the idea behind. But the disadvantage, again, is the privacy issues and uh, the data security. So today we have about 7.2 billion people and more than 7 billion uh, connections uh, which to the Internet. So according to this source, we have 10 billion devices which are daily connected to the Internet. So, <coughs> mean value, everybody uses at least 
on the world, not only in our country. The world uses one and more devices which are connected to the internet. And if the vision that each product is more or less connected to the internet, this number would be explode for sure. So <coughs> other applications. So tracking services uh, for mail to provide the current position of the package, sports sensors uh, that send the data or the, the condition of your body to a server, to computer, <coughs> to your smartphone, Google glasses. So in some areas um, Internet of Things has already already been realized, and further application, as already mentioned, is the big idea, which now is very strongly supported by the governments, by politics, is Industry 4.0, and this is the reason why also we as teacher, as researcher, <coughs> have to discuss about these topics because the politics wants that this topic is dealt with in education, in research. And they spend a lot of money that we, researcher, do this. So what is the idea of Industry 4.0? Here in a, in a picture we have a thing, an object, uh, which should be produced, just an example. Uh, this thing is quite intelligent. It is equipped with sensors, so it can recognize the environment, like the temperature of the chicken. Or another application is shock, uh, accelerations. So <coughs> if it falls down, there will, be, there will happen a shock strong accelerations and this is very important information about the history what happened to the product um, so the product the thing has an ID um, it has sensors is equipped with sensors to recognize the environment <coughs> it's intelligent and it is able to communicate with its environment in particular with the production process, with the production machine. What could be interesting information? The product knows what to do. Uh, the machine, so what to do, some parameters about its temperatures, accelerations. The product knows about its identification, about its ID. And uh, there could come also in the other direction recent information, for example, from the internet to the thing. Perhaps the user now wants to be, my thing should be green, then the information comes from the internet to the thing. And now the thing knows, oh, I should be green. Uh, the communication is between um, production machine and the thing, and the thing, uh, the production machine itself, again, is coupled or interconnected to the internet. Right. Product tracking, where is actually the product, at which machine, at which point of the process, uh, condition of the product, is it red or green, is it hot or cold, uh, information about, and again the recent information. Other possibilities are that the thing is directly connected to the internet, theoretical, possible, but I think tomorrow we will discuss about uh, how this kind of communication physically will be done and also data security plays an important role so we try to make possible distances of communication quite short to, to realize data security so usually the communication is between uh, the machine and the internet and not directly um, in terms of industry 4.0 between the thing and the internet. Okay. Mm, mm, technical backgrounds. 
I will explain some technical backgrounds about Internet of Things. Um, one important point is the supply of energy. How, where do our internet, intelligent things uh, earn the energy from? Uh, so terms like energy, harvesting, and also the communication we will discuss. Let me start with energy supply, energy harvesting. Now we have our thing. It has to be intelligent. It has to communicate. What else? It has to know about its identification. It has to supply sensors to recognize its environment. Where comes the energy from? In this case, sugar could be a good idea. So we could start a chemical process that um, generates electrical energy out from my... Oh, this is sugar-free. Sorry for that. So Zero energy. I'm sorry. We, can, we could use the pressure, the pressure. We have a different pressure. So we could use light. We could use a battery. Induction. That's it, yes. So uh, the problem is we need <coughs> energy. And the battery is a, is a bad idea because mm, there is a limited lifetime after the battery. And after, I don't know, five years, ten years, it won't work anymore. So we need some uh, systems that are able to generate energy. And this is called energy harvesting. Everybody knows what a harvest is? Yeah. Mm. To, 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 to generate energy from the environment. And one popular thing is induction. So, usually the thing has no power supply and is not active. It's completely passive. No information comes out of the thing and it isn't able to measure anything. But when it comes in the near of the reader, the reader sends, for example, an electromagnetic field, a strong electromagnetic field, and out of this field, uh, the thing is able to harvest energy. This is only one possibility. We also can use other things like uh, listed here, vibration, temperature differences, light would be probably a good solution, electromagnetic waves like RF, it's called RF, radio frequency, like RFID, also RFID gains usually the energy uh, out from uh, inductive field, from electromagnetic field, and pressures. Just two minutes before we do a short break, I think. How does it work? Oh, it's too small, huh? I'm sorry for this. I will explain it. So to realize Internet of Things, we need several systems. One we are actually talking about is the problem how to gain To um, uh, energy, we can use solar, vibration, thermal, or the commonly used is RF harvesting out of micro um, electromagnetic field. This 
kind of electrical energy has to be adapted and also stored. We need some, some, some kind of energy adaption, some kind of voltages, electrical tension, also to, 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 to store the energy in a battery, in a capacitor, thin film batteries. We need a, a certain battery management and we need some intelligence. So we need a MCU, a micro control unit. It's a microprocessor, which has to be powered by electrical energy. Uh, we also need some energy for the sensors, um, amplifiers, sensors, and we also need some energy for the communication. So this could be uh, the principle of, they are called tags, uh, smart products which are applied to the, pro this is one for example, you see, this is a tag. It knows its identification. It's able to communicate. I don't think that it has any sensors, but more or less this fulfills the requirements for Internet of Things. So this barcode. Um, okay. Um, this about energy supply, energy harvesting, I think we do a short break of about 10 minutes and then we uh, will discuss about communication, principle of communication. Regarding Internet of Things, so we talked about energy supply, we talked about energy harvesting, so it's an important requirement that our things, our systems are passive, so that they harvest their energy from the environment. Um, we talked about communication, that communication is a very important point for the realization of Internet of Things. And I want to introduce you into two typical forms of application. One older one, the barcode, it's a very good example because it shows quite easily the problems of data security, of data information, of standardization, and of a robustness regarding error occurring during the reading. So the barcode, I think everybody knows, uh, also depicted an example this remote control, uh, there is a barcode applied to identify this product as a product of the Applied uh, University of Applied Science. Uh, everybody knows a barcode, a uh, short history. What is a barcode? It's an, an optical readable um, representation of data and usually used for identification, which is also a very important uh, topic in the connection with Internet of Things. So we know, I think you know, two kinds of barcodes. The classical one, it's a one-dimensional barcode, one d car barcode. So where is the information? 
Do you see any information? So usually there are some numbers, some digits below, but this is not the information. It's the, the digits are the same information which are represented by the bars and spaces of the barcode. But the digits are only that also a human being can read this barcode. If the scanner doesn't work, you have seen at the supermarket the operator enters these numbers. But the scanner reads the information out of this pattern. And where is the information? Can you read anything? Or perhaps much more sophisticated, the two-dimensional one? Anybody can read anything? Where is the information? So, any ideas? The information... Yes? So this is a kind of code and there is a lot of information inside of this code I try to explain. So where is the information? The information is whether one module is black or it is white. So you have, you have two conditions. One module can be black or can be white. So uh, This area, the whole area, uh, is distinguished into, I think, about 97 modules. And these modules can be either black or either white. And I will show you afterwards how it works. Uh, this is also, as already mentioned, a problem of standardization. It's very important that everybody does it in the same way. And this is also with other things of communication. We only can communicate when we use the same language, when we use in technical uh, things, when we use the same protocol, when we use the same logical levels. And the barcode is an, a good example to show it how it works in a very, very simple way. You can imagine the protocols of the Internet are much more complicated. But everything of the machine-to-machine -machine communication, you need the principles you can find in the barcode. So it's an optical readable code. And the principle is we have a variation of lines and spacing. So I try to... And in this case... We have a two-dimensional code. So what you don't see within the barcode, one digit, we want to, for example, the two, one digit we want to display consists out of seven modules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh. So, and these modules can be black, or white for black black white black white I don't know just an example how many possibilities can we display with these systems? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two at the power of seven. Is? Bitte? 128. 
128. So we only need it for one digit. So a digit, that means something in between 0 and 9. The rest of the information we do not use, but we use it to recognize errors occurring during reading. So it's a safety, security aspect. I will show you how it works. So we do not use any possible condition. We restrict it into one, two, black. And two white areas. So this is not possible, but this would be possible. So then we have two areas which are black. This one, consisting of two models. This one, consisting of one module and two white one. So we have a bar, in this case, bar, a width of two models. We have a space, width of one module. We have a bar, one module, and we have a space, um, width three modules. So out of these 128 possibilities, we could um, we could identify. We only use 10 and the rest we use for security issues, for security aspects. So this value is only valid if there are two black areas, this and this, and two white areas, this and this. And another thing is to distinguish whether we read it from left or from right. If it's a left number, the number of modules for the bars have to be an even number. In this case, uh, how many modules for the bars? One, two, three. This is not an even number. You know even number? Two, four, six, eight even numbers. And odd numbers? One, three, five, and so on. So to distinguish, we we use a lot of a lot of <coughs> kommt mir nicht in den Sinn. Um, we spend a lot of power to control whether uh, the result could be correct or not. Uh, how does this one work? We have a 2D scan. We do not separate it into lines, but we separate it into two-dimensional fields. And again, these fields could be black or white. And due to this, we store our information. Usually, we have 23 times 23 modules. How many information can we put in this code? 23 times 23 is...
Pardon? 529. And so the possible numbers of combination is 2 at the power of 529. A lot of information. Let me check. 2 at the power of 529. And ohmers. You understand? It's a number with 160 units. So I don't believe that probably this is more than atoms exist on Earth. So we can store a lot of data, but we use a lot of them to reduce the risk of read errors. So, like I've, I've shown you here, we need a lot of information just to get the correct information or just to check whether the information could be right or not. And this is the same with electronic protocols. If we use RFID or Ethernet, we, we need a lot of information just to check whether the information could be right or not. So this is the idea of barcode, the idea of how to, to put information and uh, to, to generate a code where we can store information. Uh, the barcode usually is only readable. So usually we can't, or it's, it's difficult to change the barcode. For sure, there are exist machines which, which can uh, apply a, a different barcode. So we can also realize a form of two-directional communication. But for sure, using electronic devices like RFID, this kind of communication is much more easier to realize. But it's quite easy to read. We can store quite a lot of information in this ki kind of, of, of code. Uh, perhaps some information regarding the history of barcode. So the first time applied by Wrigley Gingums in 1974. And this two-dimensional codes are not that old, so uh, developed in 1995. And probably uh, the most distributed and the most used kind of communication machine to machine, machine to thing. Uh, the other one we already mentioned is the RFID, which I try to explain tomorrow. Also a problem, what we have is communication. Also for the barcode, uh, is, is standardization. Also for the barcode, a lot of standards do exist. And you can imagine that it works worldwide in, a, in, a, in an idea, in a vision like Internet of Things, that each thing can communicate with other things. We need a unique protocol. We need a unique standard. Um, for the barcodes, there is uh, an organization uh, which uh, supplies these barcodes. So when you develop a new product and you want to um, assign an identification, a barcode for, for your product, you need an organization who creates these barcodes so that the information is worldwide available which barcode is assigned to which product. Uh, for the barcodes, there is an organization, it's a non-profit international organization which supplies um, these uh, barcodes. It's called 
GS1 and this is uh, the symbol for this. But even if there is one single organization, a lot of different barcodes due to different demands had been uh, developed. So I presented the UPC code, the Universal Product Code A, but also B, C exists, and a list of different um, codes. They all look more or less the same, but the number of digits is different and also the number of coding is different. Uh, here again, it is uh, explained how it works, as I already did. For example, uh, concrete, this is an example invented by me, but each digit is um, a code assigned 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but red from left is different than red from the right side. You see, the 0 red from left looks different than the 0 red from the right side. So this is the only possibility because the scanner does not know whether you come from this or from this side, from above or from which direction you come. So um, you need a lot of ideas, a lot of energy, a lot of information potential to reduce the risk or to erase the risk of reading errors. Okay, so um, disadvantage of barcode risk of damage. This is one big problem, and this is usually also a problem with RFID which I try to explain tomorrow, but there are better solutions for RFID up to now. Uh, you can hide it. The problem of barcode is you have to be in line with sight. You have to see it. So you, it's not possible to hide it because then there, uh, you can't get any information out of this. But this is, in principle, a risk of damage, uh, for sure. Then another thing we already discussed It's more or less fixed. So the thing itself usually cannot change its barcode. So the possibilities of communication is quite reduced. Probably it's reduced mainly on identification. So condition monitoring usually is not possible. But for sure it's possible that the production machine changed the barcode and by this way uh, change the information which, which should be transformed from machine to another and which also can um, contain information about the product itself. Um, and principle, the low storage capacity, or let me say the reduced storage capacity. If we use one particular code, we are limited in the information we can uh, transport. And on the other hand, quite uh, well used, is the RFID. Just to introduce for the lesson tomorrow that you can think about until tomorrow, some ideas regarding the RFID. Radio frequency identification. So wireless transfer of data by the use of electromagnetic radio fields. But it's not an active transmitter. It should be a passive unit, which is activated from outside. This is a very important thing. Probably you have some RFID transponder. I have one to open my door. They told me it's passive. So nobody can read 
my information out of this because it doesn't send any signal now. It will be activated when it comes in the near of the reader because there is no battery inside, there's nothing inside. But when I come in the near of a, of a particular electromagnetic field with the right frequency, this transponder will be activated. It will be possible to harvest energy out of the field and then it is supplied by electrical power and then it can actively send, but I will explain tomorrow, it does not really send. It influences the magnetic field of the reader um, and this is the kind of, of uh, communication in a, in a very short and compact way. Yes, yes. For wide range, For wide range application, it's um, but it's a, a very dif different system. In principle, this system is only usable for near field applications. Uh, it uh, the reason for this is the ratio between the length of the waves and the distance to the reader. So it's a different principle. If you have uh, distances where the wavelength of the, of the electromagnetic wave is smaller than the distance, the principle is completely different as for near field uh, transmission where the wavelength, though I don't know exactly the frequency of, of this uh, transponder, but usually the wavelength is within several meters, 20 meters, depending on the frequency. Um, so in the near field, the reader realizes a time depending change of its field because the wavelength is much more longer than the distance to the uh, reader. Whereas if I have a transmission where the wavelength is smaller than the distance to the reader, it's a different principle. So where you have to read uh, the wave uh, propagation. Okay, but the, the main... Uh, I do agree that there are also active RFID tags, but already explained the problem of energy supply if we want to realize things that work for hundreds of years. So energy supply is a problem. And usually this problem is solved as by passive tax, which, mm, which produce their energy by an electromagnetic field or by, by the sun or whatever, which are autark, which are independent from any uh, power supply. So this is the usual way how RFID today is used widespread. Um, yes, semi, semi passive. Yes. Yes. So there are these three forms are possible passive, active, semi active or semi passive as you want but uh, as we know it in supermarkets and, and for key opers or for the cars usually they are passive the main purpose is an identification and tracking of, of products of things of entities and uh, again the requirements um, the problem of energy uh, supply. So they should be intelligent, they should be able to store data, and they should be passive, or they should have solved the problem of energy supply. But uh, uh, as in the following picture displayed, several frequencies are used 
Also in connection, as I already uh, told you, uh, the frequency is very connected to the distance. Um, um, and also the price is an important question. <coughs> yeah, so frequency, range, data speed, and price. These are the two, uh, these are the four uh, most important parameters um, how the systems can be selected, how the systems can be distinguished. Uh, so we are in the low frequency, so in the kilohertz range, where the wavelengths are very, very large. We have a range up to some centimeters. We have only a low data speed because also the data speed is very connected uh, to the frequency we use. Um, and we have costs about one dollars and less. Uh, so for application, <coughs> the idea is um, also in the supermarket application, if we have RFID or tax on each product, we do not need the direct site uh, to read out the information. So the idea is that you come with your your supermarket bag and where all the things are inside and the computer can read out all these tags and without handling you can uh, calculate the price. So, But in this case the, the costs for one tag is very important. So you can't apply a tag with a cost of one dollar onto uh, a bottle which are worth of, of less than one dollar. So in this case, for a mass application, we need low prices. Up to now, we are prices cheapest one, some 20, 10, 20, 30 cents. But I think for a mass application, we need prices down to one cent in this area. Um, we also discussed uh, larger distances, so we see in the gigahertz area probably applied for payment on highways and things like that, um, where the price of, of one tech is some dollars and more. Okay, I think the rest and the function in principle we will do.